Do you need an extra socket in your garage, outhouse or workshop? Well, today on Fix It With Fowler, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to add an extra socket with a few basic electrical tips along the way. So before you work on the sockets themselves, the first thing you need to do is to isolate that particular circuit. Now, if we open this lid up, then we've got three circuits here. We've got a feed out to the workshop, we've got a feed to the sockets and a feed to the lights. However, these may be labeled up incorrectly. I know they're not, but they could be. So the way we're gonna prove that is first, we're gonna test this socket and make sure that it's actually live and working. And for that, what I've got is a really simple socket tester. It tells you if the actual socket is wired correctly and also if we've got power there. So plug that in and turn it on. And now you can see the two green lights. That means that it's wired correctly. The next thing we need to do is to isolate that circuit. So if we go to the sockets and then if we turn that off, you can now see that that has actually gone off and that signifies that we've killed the power or isolated the power to the sockets. The next thing you can do is you can actually lock this circuit out with a lockout device, a lockout kit, and you can put a tag on it and that way no one can come and turn it on by accident. However, as I'm the only one in the garage, there's no need for that and I can see the consumer unit from where I'm working. So your sockets can be wired either as something called a radial or something as a ring main. A radial always starts from the consumer unit, goes to each socket or light and ends at the last one. A ring main will go from the consumer unit round every socket and come back. When you open up the consumer unit, you can normally see that the sockets are powered by a particular ampage of breaker. This is a 20 amp breaker which normally dictates that it's a radial circuit. If it's a ring main, they're normally 32 amps. So if you have a 32 amp ring main circuit, there are two ways to add an extra socket. You can either install a junction box and run a cable from that junction box to your new socket, or the simplest way is to take a cable from an existing socket and into the new socket. If you have a 16 or 20 amp radial circuit, the easiest way to add a socket is to find the last socket on the circuit. That is one that has one cable at it. Then all you need to do is take a cable from that socket to your new socket. So this is the socket that we're going to be taking the power from. And we're going to come up this conduit. Across here, we're going to draw some new holes in the joists. And then we're going to run some conduit down the wall again and we're going to mount the socket at exactly the same height as the one over there. So I always, in garages, sheds, workshops, install these metal clad sockets or switches. And the reason for that is they're really durable and impact resistant. So if you do drop something on them, there's very little chance that you're going to these break it. These boxes come with standard 20 mil knockouts in the top and also the bottom. But what we need to do is change this to a 25 mil hole so that it will accept the adapter for the conduit. My preferred method is to knock the knockout out and then get something like this. This is called a cone cutter or a step drill. And that allows you to almost widen the hole in stages, which will then allow you to put this into that hole. Now this is a really good bit of kit. It's a laser level and it comes with all sorts of attachments. You can mount it on a tripod and it's even remote controlled. I'll do a full review of this on a video in the future, but for now I'm going to set that up and then we can do, draw a laser level from there. And we know exactly where to mount it. Once you've got your socket marked, you can then drill the holes, put the raw plugs in and screw it to the wall. And then you can repeat the process up the wall. I'm going to copy the exact positions of the saddle over on the other socket 
using the laser level the same as I did for this socket itself. The only thing to make sure that you've got is the correct PPE while you're drilling and fixing. And now you can insert that into the adapter, push that in. Now I always leave this loose and there's a reason for that. When you come to put the cable in itself and you try and push it down here, what always happens is it gets stuck in between this and the lock, uh, sorry, the bush that's inside. So if you leave it loose, you can thread the cable down and you can just pull that out, feed it through and push it back in. So before you drill the joist, you want to make sure that you're in the actual center of the joist itself. That way you maintain the strength of the joist. And in this instance, I've gone for a 16 mil bit. You can use any size, but you shouldn't go too big because again, you don't want to weaken the joist. Now it's important you match the size of the cable that's what's existing. And in nine times out of 10, it will be 2.5 twin and earth cable. Rarely it may be four mil, but in my case, it's 2.5. So I'm now got that on the cable horse and I'm going to pull that through these holes, leave enough each end to terminate into the sockets. So that's the cable in at the existing socket end and the cable in at the far end where the new socket is. Now I always terminate the new one first before I put the cable in and terminate that way. That way I know 100% that before I start doing anything with this, that there's no way there can be any power to this socket. So we've got a few ways of actually stripping this twin and earth cable. You can use something like this. Now these are automatic wire strippers and all you do is put them onto the cable all you do is put them onto the cable, press, and that strips the outer, and then you can open them up, and you can do exactly the same on the inner. Or you can use something like these side cutters, and you just snip the cable in the middle, separate it, get the earth, give that a pull up to wherever you like, open the outer, and then you can cut behind there, and that's it stripped. Are you finding this electrical video helpful? Well, if you are, do me a favor and help this video reach other people and my channel to grow. All you need to do is give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button and you won't miss out on any future great DIY videos. So as you can see, we've got the live, the neutral, and this will be the earth. Now, because it's a metal clad socket, we need to terminate the earth into the back box and then into the socket. Now, you could just measure this, cut it, and then put the other one in. But I like to do something a little bit different. And what I like to do is put that down to where it's going to go into this terminal, roughly measure the earth sleeving, and then cut that. And then slide that up the earth and then with some long nose pliers, if you then bend that over and squash it together, what you end up with is that. Now you can get that and pull that straight into the terminal, tighten that up, and then that end is ready to go into the socket. Now, the reason I do that is to ensure that this is continuous cable all the way through and it will not separate in that terminal. Then get your live and earth measure to the furthest part of the socket, allow a little bit extra and cut them off. Again, you can strip with these or with the automatic cutters. And then finally, what you need to do is double these over and that way, when they go into the terminals and you've got the screw pressing on this, it's not gonna damage the copper or cut through it and break it. So once you've terminated the cables, the green and yellow into the earth, the brown into the live and the blue into the neutral, you can put a slight bend into the cables and push the front back onto the box and screw it into position. So now we've got to get this cable down the existing conduit into this socket. And again, it's going to be awkward. You can push something up there, tape it on and pull it through. You can pull that cable out 
and then pull them both through together or you can release the saddles like I have like we did before then release the conduit and that way that will just give you that bit of room to thread it into the box itself now that's the cable from the new socket into this existing back box and we're ready to terminate one slight difference is the earth does not need to go to the back box because we've already got that link in place this earth will go directly into the socket one final check before you screw this socket back now they've got two cables in every terminal is to give each one a pull and make sure they're in nice and secure so now they're all connected the last thing is to turn this on the final thing we need to do is plug in the tester turn it on ensure that we've got correct polarity that tells us everything is connected right and then also check the other side just to make sure there's no manufacturing issues with the socket itself so i hope you found that video useful that is how simple it is to add an extra socket in your garage shed or workshop